Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or just welcome to my channel. If you are new here in this video I'm going to be drawing a piece that I did for an art contest that, that was held by Hoyoverse on Hoyo Lab to celebrate the release of Genshin Impact's new region Fontaine. So the point was to draw something related to Fontaine. Now this contest was um, held a while back so by the time I upload this video the winners will probably already be announced. I probably won't win anything, but if I do, I'll put it down in the description. <laughs> I probably won't though. But uh, anyway, like I said, the point was to draw something related to Fontaine. This piece is actually the first piece I ever did, like, fully completed in Krita. Now, as you know, I usually use Autodesk Sketchbook. I did do the sketch, like the base sketch and sketchbook, but then I end up putting it in Krita, and I'll probably talk more about that a little bit later. For now, a little bit about like the thought process behind the drawing. So like I said, the theme was to draw something related to Fontaine, and of course me being still stuck and Sumeru had to go and somehow fit my favorite Sumeru trio into this drawing somehow, and so I decided to draw them visiting Fontaine. And I did try to design more Fontaine themed outfits for them. <laughs> so I don't know if I did a very good job, but we tried. Or I tried. And so the idea behind this drawing was that they were visiting Fontaine and uh, they probably been there a couple days maybe and long enough to get some new outfits and then they're at this square. I don't know if it's really the square but the place that has like the big fountain with the big Chloe orb on top of it. I don't really go with place names yet in Fontaine but yeah and uh, they are walking across that area and they run into Linny and you know he sees that they're not from here and he's like you know, hello, welcome to Fontaine, I hope you're having a nice time. Hey, by the way, you want to see a magic trick? <laughs> and then he does a magic trick for them. So my thought was that he made something disappear using his hat, and that's why he's showing them his hat. And they're just like, oh my, it's you, it actually disappeared, it's time to go. <laughs> and they're all shocked at it. And especially Kale, I tried to, my idea was that, you know, Kale was really shocked, or maybe she just, ex her special just more exaggerated. Harry's also shocked, and then Sino is trying to make it more like he's skeptical because you know since he's like a Mahamatra, I figured he's probably trying to I don't say be skeptical, but you know he's always alert. I'm assuming so he might have been trying to figure out how did Linny do this without him noticing. So that was the idea it was like he's scrutinizing and trying to figure out how this worked. I don't know if that came across, but that's what the intention was. And now I don't do magic tricks, so I'm not sure how Linny would have made something disappear. In my description for the art contest entry, I made it where he made an apple disappear, so I'm not sure how he would have done that because I don't do magic tricks. Uh, my thought is maybe he like put it on his head or something and cover put the hat over it and then he took it off and it wasn't there. I don't know if that's possible, but anyway, that was kind of like the idea. That was like the story that I was kind of having in my brain. I did make a, like a little continuation comic sketch for this to kind of like finish playing out the scene that was in my head. I'll put it right here. And yeah, for the actual piece, I decided to try to use thinner line art than I usually do. I feel like my line art is usually a lot thicker than your average manga anime art style. And uh, I thought maybe for this piece I'll try using really thin lines. I, I I guess they turned out okay or it was okay. I didn't mind it too much. I don't really remember if I liked it more or not. <laughs> but they aren't really like practically non-existent lines like you see in some of these anime art pieces, but or anime styled art pieces, but they're thinner than I usually use. And then like I said I designed more Fontaine styled outfits for these Sumeru characters. I uh, designed it on paper, but the colors I didn't have like, I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do for the colors, but I didn't like plan it out until I actually got to coloring them. That's why you can kind of see here on like, when I'm coloring chicken already, I'm just, all things are always changing because I'm trying to figure out how I want the colors to fit on his outfit to be cohesive, especially since I was trying to fit like a bunch of colors on his outfit specifically because his default look is he has a lot of colors on his default outfit and I was trying to put a few of those colors onto this outfit and make it look cohesive. Like I love Shinori but I'll forever roast the amount of colors 
this and his default look. Like, I kind of got used to it at this point, but I still feel like with the amount of layers he has and like all those colors, it just it makes his design look a little bit cluttered. I probably would have toned took away a couple of colors if it was me, but I didn't design him and I'm I still like him. So anyway. And uh for Kale, I tried to use colors from like her default outfit too. So I played around with like what would work and I use end up using like brown and green for the corset and like skirt. And then I just tried to pick a color that kind of matched those and so I ended up going with like this yellowy orange for the blouse. And then for like the bows I did purple I guess to kind of like match her eyes. And then I also had some flowers. There's supposed to be a Sumeru rose and like some other random flower. So I don't know if it comes across as a Sumeru rose but I tried and since that's purple I figured I guess to kind of pull all the purple accents together I made the bows purple. And for Sino I kind of just went the monochrome, like, not monochrome, but like monotone, I guess. <laughs> That's all, it's all purple, basically. Now I know his default outfit is a little bit more like bluish hued, but I went with more purples. I, th I think the darker spots are, are like the darker color, purple is more of a bluey hue, but I ended up just doing like purple, different shades of purple for him. And I did change Kale's hairstyle. I don't think her hair is actually long enough to make pull off the hairstyle now that I think about it, but. I don't know, maybe. It's kind of like a half up and I kind of curled it and made it wavy at the bottom. And then for Shikinari and Sino's hair, I kind of just left their hair. Shikinari doesn't have as much hair to work with, so I kind of just left his hairstyle. And then Sino, I think I tried to make the bangs look a little bit more like waved or fancy. I don't know, but I don't know if it came across like that. I think I was going to try to change his hairstyle, but he was end up looking too much like a different character. I want to say is looking too much like Nueva I don't know. But anyway, I'm kind of sleeping his hair, just kind of making the bangs look fancier. I tried anyway. And well, for Lenny, I didn't change anything because he's actually Fontanian, so I just left his outfit and I'm sorry, my wrist is itching, so you're probably gonna hear that <laughs> me scratching. But his outfit was pain pain to, to draw. It has so many stinking swirls and designs patterns. I was actually originally intending to simplify all the swirls because I knew Lydia's outfit had a lot of them on there, but I'm not really great at simplifying things like this. So I ended up just drawing it all and the line art took forever. I'm honestly kind of happy to do it all though because it looks nice, but the thing is though, for all that detail in the line art, it, his color palette kind of made up for it, you know? It, it literally only has like three colors on his outfit, so yeah, and so for like the black part of his outfit though it did have a lot of gradients and I'm not sure if it's actually supposed to be like the fabric is actually light and dark in some areas or if the gradient was kind of just added as an artistic choice to add like interest you know sometimes artists will do that and just add gradients to add interest like to hair even though the characters don't really have ombre hair you might add a light to dark gradient a little bit like a very subtle gradient usually in the direction of the light source just to add some interest I don't know if that's what the case was with his like outfit, but I did gradiate it in some areas where it looked like it was gradiated. And uh, I do realize that the hat actually had details on the top now. I didn't have a reference for the top of the hat, so I just left it blank, but I do realize it has details on it later when I was in game and um, oh well. <laughs> but anyway, so. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how it all turned out. I'm glad I drew all those details, man. And, uh, yeah. So, I did realize I forgot Linny has a little bit of, like, a red tint to his bangs. I totally forgot it. Just ignore that, okay? Just ignore the fact that I forgot that. And, uh, I didn't forget the little teardrop on his face, so I didn't forget that. I was almost afraid I would. I made sure I put that in drew that in the sketch and didn't forget it <laughs> but anyway I know in the beginning I did have him with a different expression but then after doing the like Archon quest I felt like I kind of learned what his personality was like more and so I changed the expression to a little bit more of a playful one but before I guess it was a little bit more like I don't want to say like stuck up but you know <laughs> like a less smiling expression if that makes any sense so for the background, I kind of just used a screenshot from the game, painted over it. I know you're gonna be like, that's tracing. Well, 
What is exactly tracing? You know, why does paint over 3D models all the time to save time? And uh, honestly, if I wasn't doing this for a uh, contest though, I might have just used the screenshots, the background, and blurred it if I was feeling lazy. But by painting over it, I was able to give it a lot more of a painterly feel. And also, I could paint over the NPCs so I can draw on my own NPCs, which I wanted to do. So, yeah, and I'm also able to play with the lighting and shadows a lot more and make it more dramatic. I know in the beginning I was trying to do something artistic with the colors and I made everything look too purple and I ended up shifting it to be more blue because I want- this is the nation of Hydro, I want it to be more blue. For the very back here, I, I kind of just blobbed the colors in and blurred it, to be honest. I did try to make it look like there's a building back there, but I couldn't really tell what was back there for one and two. I didn't want to draw too much attention to this corner. But yeah, it was very blue back there, so the walls are looking really purple against it. I ended up color adjusting them later to be more blue. And I also left out a lot of details on the wall in the back, like for a while, but I ended up coming back and adding more brick kind of detailing. It was not, it was really quick, and it was just kind of just to add texture or anything. I didn't think there's some details I kind of forgot or didn't notice, but for the fountain, I did paint over it and, uh, I try to keep the fountain a little bit more crisp because it's closer, so I want it to be more detailed. And I also add a lot more glow to the fountain and a lot more like hit light and stuff than that was actually in the screenshot because I thought it looked cool. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was able to paint over the NPCs and draw my own NPCs in. Now, I originally wanted to change the light source, but I don't think my knowledge like of how Fontaine City is structured is a really tiered structure to it and I probably wouldn't have been able to figure out how the light and shadow would react so I ended up kind of just painting the light source that was on the on the screenshot but like I said everything I did try to keep it more crisp on the fountain but everything it does have a more painterly look which I really like the painterly look I'm kind of happy with how it turned out and uh yeah then I painted some NPCs up on the second tier and on the staircase and off to the side and then I did paint some NPCs right in front of the fountain kind of close to where these NPCs are in the screenshot but a little bit more to the side and now I don't know if anyone noticed but for those two NPCs that were in front of the fountain I can imagine them being like siblings like an older sister and her kid brother and so I don't know like I said if anyone noticed what I did with that but I was trying to make it where like the little kid was looking over at our main cast because, you know, someone's performing magic tricks over there, and I think Lenny's pretty well known in Fontaine, so the kids probably recognized him. But I was trying to make it realize the kid looked like he wanted to go over and watch the magic tricks, but his sister's like, no, we have places to be, or we're like, you know, we have to run all these errands, or whatever they're doing. So he's like, no, come on, and he's like looking over, wishing he could go watch the performance, <laughs> watch the magic tricks. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but that was what I was trying to do with those NPCs. But yeah, so like I said, I played a lot with the lighting and shadow, and uh, especially for the like way background, I tried to make it look more, I don't know if I made it more saturated, but more dramatic, I guess. And I now that I think about it, I should have used some Gaussian Blur on the background, because Krita actually has that option to use Gaussian Blur, Sketchbook did not have that option, but I ended up just using like a, a white haze to kind of fade out the background. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the background looks really nice and painterly. And I am happy with this piece overall, but I'm also not happy with it. Like, I feel like I could have done better in some places, but I had kind of gotten a late start on this piece. And so, like, I was making, trying to make sure I finished on time to, you know, submit to the contest on time. So I was, like, kind of rushing towards the end. I stayed up really late to make sure I got this finished. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but Sino's skin, I feel like, looks a little bit off and, like... I don't know if I just shaded it or lit it wrong, and I kind of wish I had time to go make it look better. <laughs> Honestly, you can already a little bit too, but mostly Sinos. And also, I kind of wish I had added more NPCs, but again, I was kind of pressed for time. And I already spent so much time on the background to get to look right, to make sure it kind of faded more into the background and steal from, like, attention from my characters. And so, yeah, I am happy with the piece overall. But there are just some things I kind of wish I had time to, you know, fix or to make it look better. But, oh well. <laughs> so that was pretty much the thought process behind this drawing and a little bit of, you know, as I was drawing it. 
And uh, so back to the whole first piece I ever did in Krita. So I usually use Auto Sketchbook, but I feel like recently, like this year, early this year, I've realized that, you know, it hadn't got an update for a while. I use like the old Autodesk Sketchbook desktop version. Like I actually had a CD installed it into my computer. And I feel like it was getting updates recently and honestly it was kind of crashing on me a little bit more than usual and I felt like it was falling behind a bit in the amount of tools that like I feel like some other programs were a little more advanced in the tools than uh, Sketchbook. So I looked into it and I realized I can't remember if it all just sold Sketchbook to like a different company or if they just decided to move it to where it is purely mobile as a purely mobile art program. And so they didn't, the old desktop version I have wasn't really supported anymore. That's why I wasn't getting updates. So I thought maybe I'll go ahead and try a different program. So I looked around and got, decided on Krita. And I, uh, I have used Adobe Illustrator in the past when I think we had like a student bundle and I didn't really like how it was set up. I don't know. I feel like Sketchbook was just a lot more simpler and more, I don't say natural feeling to Adobe Illustrator. And so Krita felt more like Adobe Illustrator and I kind of didn't really like it at first, but I figured, oh well, it's probably more advanced in the tools and stuff. So I'll just try to get used to it. Maybe I'll do some doodles in Krita and then all the big projects that I want to get done fast, I'll do in Sketchbook because I'm used to Sketchbook and I can navigate it faster. But that never worked out. I always had projects I want to get done fast. So I was always using Sketchbook. I never really used Krita. I did do like a couple doodles, but I never really got to the point that I got used to it. So, so for this piece, I was kind of thinking I probably should just use Sketchbook, right? So I get it done fast. But then I'm like, well, no, the whole point is to learn Krita. I need to learn how to get used to Krita. So I figured I would try it in Krita and hope for the best. <laughs> and I did manage to enter it, so that's good. But yeah. Now I am sad that I can't bring all my like favorite brushes from Sketchbook into Krita. That's the only thing. So I had to kind of find brushes in Krita that I liked, you know, got get used to some and find my favorites. I really miss my smudge tool though. It was really hard to try to get this smudge tool to behave like my other one. It's almost like it's smudged too much. And so I think I managed to get to where it toned down a little bit, but still just not like my Sketchbook one. And I'm always going to miss my messy watercolor and my messy well, it wasn't really super messy. It's like a slightly textured paint brush to brush that I would use to shade. I'm, I'm gonna miss that one too, but and also my kind of rough pencil that I always did for use for line art. But anyway, so the one thing with Krita though is I do realize it had some a small selection of filters and stuff, which I thought was cool. Like that's that's something I always wish Sketchbook had. And I also found out the magic of clipping masks. I never used clipping masks because Sketchbook doesn't have clipping masks. It doesn't support that feature. So um, I realized how amazing they were when I did this piece. It, and I, I actually kind of separated a lot of like, I think each character is separated up. I think I had their hair and their skin and their clothes all on different layers. I don't usually do that because on my old computer, I, if I used too many layers of sketchbook, I felt like it bogged it down. And I don't know if it's just sketchbook couldn't keep up with it, my computer couldn't keep up with it, but it would get really slow if I had a lot of layers, and especially if my canvas was really huge. So I always was trying to conserve layers and would always do ev all the coloring on one layer. But for this, I figured I would try to separate it actually and use clipping masks to kind of make things easier, especially since I have an upgraded computer now. So. It's a more beefy gaming computer and I think it could probably handle the layer count. And uh, yeah, so I realized how amazing clipping masks were. That was cool. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I think I kind of got used to Krita at this point by the time I was done with this drawing, like I said, because I this drawing literally took me like 24 hours over the course of a week. It was a long time. And I also used... I actually use the hotkeys on my drawing tablet, so I use a Huion H610 Pro drawing tablet, and it has like hard keys that you can use. I never use them in hindsight. Now I think I probably just didn't program them right, but I feel like when I tried to program them once and use them in the Sketchbook, every time I like restart my computer, or or maybe it's every time I booted up Sketchbook, 
the like keys would reset and they wouldn't work right so I just never used them but for Krita I programmed them and I guess I did it right this time like so I think I just did it wrong last time I just and I just didn't feel like dealing with it so but for Krita I felt like since I'm not used to like the setup and stuff and some things were just a little bit harder to get to <laughs> than they would be in sketchbook I figured I would just program my keys and so I actually used a lot of the hotkeys on my tablet to navigate and use Krita. But anyway, I think I kind of got used to Krita. My muscle memory is now kind of attuned to Krita. So if I use Sketchbook, I'm almost like, you know, trying to fumbling. <laughs> but I'll probably still use Sketchbook, especially for quick doodles. Or maybe a lot of times I'll do the sketch in Sketchbook and then move it to Krita, like I did with this piece. But yeah. And so I believe that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I guess I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.